Listen up, everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? <laughs> quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the Traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. It's up to you, Traveler. Great, it's settled then. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Oh, yeah? What's that? Fair enough. It seems so. Who will it be? Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that. Or... Guyanstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. So how about we snap Guyanstone Forest for today's class? <laughs> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to... Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> were they now? <laughs> Strange. I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Huixing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fuzhong. Or Mora Grubber. Even little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain, after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the Traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> so, what do I do now, Traveler? Um, like this? That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting or something. You've got it wrong. <clears throat> I never said that. You mean go somewhere else than bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm. Huh. The lighting may still be a problem, but I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear, I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind. The fishing village near Wangshu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. <laughs> Treasure? There? I guess I missed out on that one. It just so happens that that little village is where I grew up. And now that you've mentioned it, it's given me the urge to go back and take a look around. How about we take this opportunity to pay my old home a visit?
it's certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day, it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred, and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. Now Upriver is long gone, and Downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. To Zhong. Zhong. Hmm. I barely remember this name. You're right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. Half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running, but straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired, or maybe it had starved to death. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? Come on, I'll explain along the way. About... A year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing. But in the end, they all turned on me saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then don't cry, don't cry. Cry, it's gonna be okay. Then some of the villagers started shouting and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. What do you mean? <laughs> is that all? Then let me guess. You got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> Well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, 
Tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. <laughs> Two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? Hey, that's pretty good. What? The nerve! What do you think this is? I don't want to do this whole modeling thing. Hey, cut it out. Nope. 